Welcome to episode 10 of my Fallout build series. Old Preston sure has had me busy lately, and I've been working hard helping the Minutemen out in the Commonwealth. And sadly, I haven't had a chance to give you a tour in a while. I'm sorry about that. But I think you're going to like this one. I stumbled on this old water pump house a while back. It was pretty well infested with Mirelurks. It took me a while to clear them all, and remove the eggs too. But once I had the place clean, I started to look for anything I could salvage. The old pump wasn't working anymore, and I doubted I'd be able to get it running again. But then an idea struck me. Well, I won't spoil the surprise. Let's just go take a look. Pay no mind to the mess. I really haven't had a chance to work on the equipment up here yet. But I'm pretty sure the old employees would sit up here and monitor the pumps. From what I can gather from the gauges, they'd just look for fluctuations in pressure and make adjustments when they needed them. And they had a pretty clear view of the main pump down there. I don't know what I'll end up using this space for, but I'm sure I'll think of something. Now, these mixing stations came from a cafe downtown. And with a bit of help, I had them hauled here, and I'm doing some experimenting with them. So far, not much success. And it took a bit of work getting the generator to fire again. I think I drained a few fusion cores trying to get it to work. Runs like a top now, though. And it has plenty of power for what I'm doing here. There isn't a whole lot of space to work on these floors, so I rigged up this table real quick. Just for some impromptu repairs when I need them. But here is the big surprise. Now, thanks to a bunch of favors that I had owed to me, I was able to get this equipment from the old Gwinnett Brewery. Along with a few of their recipes. That's right, the Commonwealth has a brewery again, albeit a small one. But I already have a few batches made and ready to ship out. And this place was perfect for this. Most of the water pipes are out of here. I've got a decent water source, once you boil out the contaminants, and plenty of power. So here's how it all works. This tank in the middle boils the water, and it sends it to the two tanks on either side. And there I add the razor grain and let it soak in the hot water to release all the sugars. Then I boil it again and I add hops for bitterness, and they also make the beer last a little longer too. And I bring the samples over here and just check the consistency. I can verify that the recipe is correct too, because I am pretty new at this. And while I'm doing this, I let the solution now called Wart cool. Now I have a small test brewery set up over here, and this is where, so far, I have ruined most of my beer experimenting with new flavors. But I pump the wort to these tanks once it's cooled, and then I add the yeast. And the yeast ferments the sugars, releasing the alcohol. Then I barrel it up and it's ready for delivery. It's actually a pretty amazing process. I get pretty excited when I talk about it. Now upstairs, I'll show you my hops. I found these growing wild by the Beantown Brewery and I brought them here. So far, they're adapting pretty well. They get a bit of natural light and fresh air from those vents and provide just enough flowers to be able to add to my beer. And here is where I add the razor grain and the hops into my tanks. And I try to get my measurements correct before I mess up my recipes. Thankfully, I've only had a few undrinkable batches. But I do that here. Now, I'll show you the old break room now. I got rid of all the junk and turned it into a living space. There isn't much room, so I had to take advantage of everything I had. It's small, but it's comfortable. 
I've got a bed. I've got a desk. I've even got a closet. But best of all, I have a bathroom. Like a real bathroom. And there's plenty to read when you're taking your, uh, your, your break. I didn't have to do anything in here. This is pretty much how it was left. So our last stop is just outside this door. Now, this is where I'm going to be making all of my deliveries to and from. Uh, it's really going to be handy to have this door here. I had to have a spot to tinker with my projects. So I have this tucked under the canopy to give a bit of shade. And it stays pretty cool here during the day. And here is my kitchen. <laughs> Jealous, I know. But like I said, space is at a premium, so this was just about my only option. But hey, an open fire does make the food taste better. And when the weather's nice, I enjoy sitting here taking in the cool breeze off of the lake. Okay, so stick around. I have something really neat that I want to show you guys. Here's what the area looked like before I built the pump house. I needed something on the lake, and I had to have a really steep drop-off to make the building have all three floors. I really wanted to try and build in layers this time. And this area fit really well. It's just northwest of Breakheart Banks, and straight north of Green Top Nursery. If you follow that road, you'll find this exact area. And here is how it all went together. <laughs> <laughs>